Hello, this is Joe Yuhan, and today we are going to talk about nerve pain. We're going to talk about nerves, what they are, how they're supposed to move, and how they can cause pain. It really mimics a lot of the normal sort of orthopedic aches and pains that runners can get. So the first thing we have to talk about is just outline what nerves are. So nerves are essentially electrical cables that run from our central nervous system, which is in our brain and our spinal cord, out to the periphery. So the easiest thing that you can think of, really and truly, is an electrical cable such as this. So we've got this cable, and if we're going to talk about a nerve going into my arm, which is a little bit easier to demonstrate, that nerve is going to run from, it's going to come down from inside my head, it's going to run down my neck, and then at whatever associated level, usually the lower cervical, um, that nerve is going to exit my neck, flow from my neck into my shoulder and into my arm. In the, in the arm in particular, there's three major nerves, and depending on the location and where they go. But suffice to say, this is what they look like. So you can see, most people are kind of surprised by this, that, that a nerve is, in some respects, um, some of the arm nerves are even bigger than this cell phone charger cord that I have here. Um, and they're also surprised by the idea that, that this is a real cord and that it has to move. So a lot of issues that we have, whether it's um, an arm pain, a shoulder pain, or the same thing in the leg with the sciatic nerve flowing down the backside here and here, um, have to do with mobility deficits with these cords. So why does this happen? Well, you can think of it um, from just a simple kind of mechanical standpoint where we have all of this tissue. We have muscles and tendons and bones and blood vessels, whether it's here or flowing out of our hip and pelvis. And this little electrical cable has to somehow not only fit in there, but also flow amongst that tissue to get to where it needs to go. And what's unique about the nerves relative to, say, a muscle, is that there are very few muscles that span more than one joint. So the bicep, for example, goes from the shoulder all the way to the elbow, that crosses two joints but the nerves of the arm cross every single joint from the neck all the way into the fingertips. So that has to have an enormous amount of mobility. And for whatever reason, if that motion is lost, we can have problems. Same thing goes with the leg. Our main nerve going through the backside is the sciatic nerve, and that's gonna come off in our low back and head down, coalesce into the main sciatic nerve right about here, and then flow down our leg. In the front, we have the femoral nerve, same thing. That femoral nerve starts in the upper to mid lumbar and then does an outflow into the front of the thigh and goes to the front of the knee. So these nerves have to move across multiple joints and multiple systems. And if there's any tension, stiffness along that way, all of a sudden this nerve can't move. So the number one kind of analogy story that I tell is to imagine this is imagine that you've got a spool of hose in the front of the yard. And you know you've got enough hose to get to the backyard, but in the case of nerve tension, you're halfway around the house and all of a sudden you're doing this. And you're like, well, wait a second. I know I've got enough here. Why am I getting hung up? And the same thing can happen in the upper body with the arm or with the leg where I know I have enough nerve, so to speak, to go all the way here, but I am either stuck down here or stuck here. So it's very often that gets attributed to, oh, I have a tight hamstring. Or in the arm, you should have enough nerve to go all the way out to here, but oh, maybe it's a tight wrist or a tight shoulder. The difference is a couple different things, which we've talked about before. The symptoms are different. The severity of pain is different and the severity of sensitivity, and then how it responds to conventional treatment. Most people, if we did this, you're not necessarily gonna feel a normal stretch. You might feel pins and needles in this median nerve tension position. 
And that can be one tell to say, well, wait a second, this isn't actually muscle. So that's nerve mobility. So very simply, from an electrical cable standpoint, I've got this cable that has to flow through here. And a flow deficit, whether anywhere along this cable, and a flow deficit means, does it move correctly or is it stuck? or is there an irritation somewhere along this cable, that can have problems that get sent down the length of that nerve. And that's the frustrating thing. You may have a little bit of a neck issue and have elbow pain. Or you may have a low back issue and a, maybe a stiffness of the sciatic nerve here, but it's gonna express itself as hamstring pain or even as foot or ankle pain. So that's one of the interesting concepts is an issue anywhere along the length of this nerve can give an issue elsewhere. And then that goes into then how we treat this. We have to, when we have something that we suspect is a nerve pain, then there's a few things that we have to do. The first is, is we have to make sure that where the nerve comes from, that this system is moving. And I call this um, kind of the plumber's theorem. If you asked a plumber, if you had a piping, a drain that's clogged somewhere, they're gonna tell you, well, just because it's not flowing right here doesn't mean that the problem isn't down here or over here or down here, that you have to kind of clear that whole length. And the same goes when you have a nerve problem. If you have a nerve problem in the hamstring, the first thing you have to do is to, is to consider the mobility of the lumbar spine and potentially the whole rest of the spine because all of the lumbar nerves have to start at the head and neck and flow through the spinal column. So making sure this system can move is step number one. Just like if that hose is stuck in the front of the yard, the first place that it generally gets stuck are the hedges that are like immediately where that hose is connected. So in the case of this cord or this hose, what we have to clear first and foremost is the neck. Do the vertebrae around that nerve, can they move properly or is there stiffness that might be causing that initial compression right here? So we clear that kind of central system and then we go about making sure that this nerve can move more peripherally. And how we do that is we can go through nerve, nerve mobility tests and nerve mobility exercises, which we're gonna talk about in another video. But what this video is about is just identifying that these nerves, these are living, breathing, and sensitive electrical cables that run the entire length of our body and go across multiple joints. And for them to function properly, they have to have good mobility along that entire length. Uh, conversely, if there's an issue anywhere along the nerve, you can have pain anywhere along the nerve. That's the challenge, that's the frustration of nerve pain, and that's what can make it so darn persistent. So stay tuned, we're gonna talk a little bit more about the specifics of kind of how to evaluate um, nerve mobility and then how to treat it.